Okay, so what I wanted to do in this video is I wanted to talk about the functionality of the trail arm. I think understanding what your trail arm is supposed to do in the golf swing is really gonna help you just find a new level of consistency with your golf. I know that's the case for all the students that I work with. So I wanna break it down into three areas. We're gonna talk a little bit about the hinging action of the back of the trail wrist. We're also going to talk about the sort of folding action of the trail arm, if you like a, an external rotation movement. And we're going to talk about the pivot. We're going to talk about pivoting well and how that's going to help you locate the arm correctly. And just try and put all of that together so you can really understand how important this arm move is and how to obviously go away and practice it. So to get started with, we need to understand, I would say, the hinging action first. So to clarify, what I mean by a hinge is if I keep my, uh, if you put a line here through my wrist and through my, my hand, a hinge is this type of motion. I'm not talking about any kind of wrist cocking motion. If anything, with the trail hand, we want to avoid any wrist cocking motion in the back swing because that's not going to help us get into a good position as we'll elaborate uh, later on. We want to just work on this type of motion here. Now, the reason why I'd suggest that you do this to get started with is because it will just help move the club back a little bit. So when we get set up to the golf ball, what we want to do is we want to get the feeling of the club face staying looking at the golf ball and we want to try and advance the club head a few feet back without the hands moving excessively away from the body. So again we're going to talk about how to keep the arms connected and what's really important is if I just allow my wrist to hinge you can see the way the club can go back a few feet without any excess. We're not talking DJ trying to flex the wrist massively I'm just talking a little bit of the hinge lets the club move back and my arms can stay connected to my body. What we don't want to do in that takeaway is get the feeling of this arm moving excessively away from it. It's a little bit more like this. Now, the other thing that happens in the golf swing is we have something known as swinging the club on plane, which is this sort of line that I've drawn on the screen now. So again, what the hinging action does is it's just the feeling of the club head traveling in a straight line. And you can see the way it just allows the club to move up the plane line and keeps the club face moving nice and square, if you like perpendicular to that plane line very early in the back swing. And if we can avoid any unnecessary movement early in the swing, then obviously that's going to lend itself to more consistency and give us the next development factor in the next part of the golf swing. So we've created the hinge. What we now need to do is we need to understand how to move the arm. So we're going to talk about it as a concept of folding, if you like, like I say, an element of sort of external rotation, which is this motion here. But what I'm also going to just try and highlight is it's more like a feeling of folding, or you could almost imagine like a sort of door hinging action. So the feeling is that your upper arm wants to stay pretty close to the side of your body, but you can see not literally glued, you can allow the elbow to move away from the body, but equally we're trying to avoid anything that looks like this. This is going to be a big problem in the back swing position. It's more this type of action here. So you can kind of see the way if I do it from the side arm, I just allow my arm to fold similar to a door action. So you can see the way that I've introduced that hinge, but you can see the way that I'm trying to really keep my palm pointing down towards the floor. I'm trying to avoid any unnecessary rotation. And like I said earlier, what we're trying to avoid as well is any wrist cocking motion. So if I demonstrate that position from side on, so I hinge the club back, I fold my arm and I look like so. So again, if we re-establish the plane line and we can see the way we're nicely on plane, and if I stand from the face on perspective, what we can see is the way that I've produced an element of wrist cocking, but I'm not doing it excessively to the point where it's affecting the wrist positions, and I'm certainly not allowing my arms to get too close to my body. So understanding a hinge and a subtle fold is going to help you keep nice and wide in the golf swing, but it's also going to give you good wrist conditions to help you keep the club face nice and square but also equally keep a nice amount of width and keep that club on plane. The question would be then, well, how do you get further up? And this is why your rotation is so important. So if I put my hands across my shoulders here and just sort of rotate, where I get the feeling of, say, just turning on a nice tilted angle, you can see the way that my trail shoulder moves up and behind me. So if I can then incorporate that wrist hinge, that folding action, and a nice rotation, that gets me into a really good location at the top of the backswing where I'm abiding by all the principles that we need. The hinge action on the back of the wrist helps me keep the club on plane. It also helps me keep the club face nice and square. If I introduce wrist cock, you can see the way the club face gets open and I also start getting too narrow. We want that nice amount of width, which hopefully you can see here. The, the concept of width is best applied by understanding the angle between the upper and lower arm. So we don't want this, we want this position. And again, that's best practiced with a hinge, a fold and your turn. And then obviously you're gonna to have to synchronize that up. Wrist, fold, turn to get into a great looking backswing position where it's just crying out for a good downswing. So working on the hinge, working on the fold and understanding a good rotation means that in theory we just need to kind of do a little bit of roll reversal to start the downswing. So similar to what I said in the backswing position, if we turn well 
then the shoulder is gonna get me into a good placement. If you're somebody who turns poorly, well, that's why then you end up pulling your arms up to complete the backswing and it ends up in a bit of a mess. So theoretically, it's the same in the downswing. If you have a good backswing position and you stand up in the downswing, your arms are gonna be messy. If you can learn to rotate through, then obviously your arms are gonna be able to come down to the side of your body. I think the, the best way to think of this going back to this sort of rotation is it's just to get the feeling of your trail shoulder moving underneath your chin because if again if I want to hit the golf ball where my hands end up ahead of the club head then what I need to make sure is the shoulder keeps moving through the only way this shoulder can move is if I keep turning my chest and lower body through the ball so from this backswing position here what will happen is I'll start to turn and then this means that I can also allow this arm to straighten this angle here that helps me keep that club on plane, which I'll show you in a moment. And that's going to get me into a great looking impact position every time. So again, from side on, this arm is going to naturally straighten as I move this way. Okay. Now, obviously, I've tried to highlight some areas. There's going to be more movement. This arm's going to fire through as you swing through. But again, I think if you can concentrate on a good chest rotation through the ball and get that shoulder through, I think you'll find this trail arm will move pretty effortlessly through the ball. And I think those are the key aspects of having a good position understanding of that trail arm in the golf swing. So try and work on it like that. Do your hinge, do your fold, do your turn, and then try and get the feeling of doing your turn as you let that arm go a little bit more naturally in the downswing position. But obviously every golfer is slightly different. But if you're somebody who is similar to the people that I work with online or people that come to visit for lessons, double check your pivot get those wrist positions, think about that fold because it will make a massive difference to your consistency. See you soon.